that's being uncovered on our coastline. But to discover the earliest ancestors of man ever found in northern Europe, well, it doesn't get much bigger, does it? Scientists examining flint tools found at Haysborough in Norfolk say they're 800,000 years old, eclipsing previous finds by thousands of years. Well, Kate Prout joins us from there now. Kate, a fascinating find. Well, absolutely, and prompted by a chance discovery on the beach here by a dog walker, can you believe, of a flint axe. And this is it in question. This is half a million years old, discovered six years ago, and it prompted scientists and archaeologists from across Europe to come and excavate the beach here. What they discovered was evidence of human life long before Neanderthal man, long before the Ice Age, back to a time when a former human roamed the land known as Pioneer Man. The ever-changing cliffs of Haysborough, redefining the history of Britain. Archaeologists excavating the shoreline here found more than 70 flint tools and flakes. What we can say from the finds at the site is that these people were hunter-gatherers living off the land and they were living next to a huge river, uh, which was actually the River Thames flowing 100 miles north of its present location. The flint tools at the site, uh, some of them are, are simple flakes that were probably used for cutting, butchering meat, and some of them have been modified maybe to make scraping tools. To give you an idea of just how old we're talking, Sea Henge, discovered in West Norfolk, was Bronze Age, so around 4,000 years old. The West Runton Elephant was buried around 600,000 years ago. Recent remains at Pakefield in Suffolk indicate signs of human life here 700,000 years ago, but the Haysborough flints indicate that Britain was occupied by humans as long ago as 800,000 years ago. This is the first record of early Pleistocene humans on our island. Evidence has previously been found in the Pyrenees and the Alps in Europe. The surprising thing here is we're dealing with a situation that is well over 100,000 years earlier than previously thought, and they appear to be coping with a much harsher climate, a much more difficult climate with distinctly cooler winter temperatures. Haysborough back then would have looked nothing at all like the sea-ravaged village it is today. In fact, it would have been a massive floodplain with mammoth, rhino and hyenas running around. Ironic then that the land that is disappearing before our eyes can reveal so much of our past. Well, I think we really can discover Kate through the <laughs> oblong window this time. Uh, Kate, <laughs> just how important is this discovery? Well, this pretty much rewrites our knowledge of British history. It harks back to a time when you could apparently walk from Haysborough to Holland. But someone with slightly better knowledge of it is Dr David Waterhouse, who is on the dig. What have we learnt about human beings from what you've discovered? Uh, basically, we've been finding these flint tools, these flakes that, that um, these early humans, Homo antecessor or pioneer man, uh, were making and using here in the ancient river that used to flow through Haysborough. And it wasn't just flints. You were carrying some other interesting things in your hands. Talk us through these. Mm. Yeah, there, there, there was a lot of uh, different animals there, and we're building up a picture of, of animals and plants that were there at the time. And this is a, a tooth off an extinct species of elk that, that we found and part of the jaw. Uh, and this, believe it or not, is uh, it's a hyena coprolite, uh, otherwise known as hyena poo. Well, I'm glad you're holding that and not me. Now, the dig actually sounds fascinating. You used a JCB to dig down the top layer of soil and sand here. And then what happened after that? Yeah, the actual site is uh, about six feet below beach level. So um, once the digger got down there, we went in uh, by hands using shovels and, and trowels to, to actually get to the layer that we wanted, where these fossils and, and the tools were found. And pretty heavy work by all accounts. Mm, yeah, it was, it was quite uh, hard work, but good fun. OK, well, if you want to know more about Pioneer Man and the discoveries, there's an exhibition at Norwich Castle Museum from Friday. For the dog walkers here tonight, well, the thought is, what else lies beneath these sands? I wonder. Kate, thank you very much indeed for that. It's amazing, isn't it, actually? I think we're quite bright, you and me, actually, because what did we say when we saw that before? We had a little practice before the programme, we, and we saw the man holding that the... That was you. <laughs> and, and I said I thought it was prehistoric poo. It turns out I was right. <laughs> My word. Right, uh, finally tonight, they were the heroes of the Second World War, risking their lives night after night to carry out bombing raids across Nazi-occupied Europe. 
Now, the veterans of Bomber Command from Essex have been reunited with their famous Lancaster aircraft for what may be the last time. The eight men, who would have made up a full crew in fact, met at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire, home to one of only two Lancasters that are still airworthy. Albert Patel has the report. They were young men fighting for Queen and Country. 90,000 officers joined Bomber Command. Only about 10,000 avoided being killed, seriously injured or taken prisoner. These eight survivors came together for a date with a special lady, the Lancaster bomber in which they went to war. Understandably, it brings back emotional memories for them all. She's, well, she's something special. It still brings a lump in your throat. As I say, she was a fantastic thing. And to be able to well, come and look at it, go over it, it obviously will be the last time there. It's to fly together with seven people in one plane. Uh, it was like an adventure, really. And it was a beautiful plane to fly, beautiful plane to uh, look at, and it still is today. So it always brings a lump to my throat when I see a Lancaster or hear a Lancaster. Jim Flint, who is now 97, says the reunion is a chance to remember his days as an operational commander of 50 Squadron. You feel you, you like to just crawl in and have a go, but you realise the years have gone on. I can honestly say that I never had to come back and complain about any one of my engines and uh, the only time was when those naughty Germans knocked bits off them. For these men, the star of this event is the Lancaster bomber. For everyone else, the true stars are the men who crewed them. Alpa Battelle, Anglia News. Wonderful story. We'll be looking back again to World War II on tomorrow night's programme. Right, plenty more news coming your way on the rest of the news hour. Here's what the national team have for you in... Well, it looked lovely in Haysborough this evening, didn't it? Did. It did, delightful. Let's get the weather forecast now with Amanda Houston. That's it from us. We're back again tomorrow night. Join us for that. Until then, bye-bye. Goodbye.